Hey there, welcome back YouTube. We got a interesting interview with Amir Khan on Channel 4 News here. Um, Amir Khan was, is the person that's being arrested and then they cancel the arrest and will they, won't they? They're trying to basically deny deny him any kind of power because, you know, that's that's how Pakistani politics is. Um, it's, it's cutthroat. They've never had a politician ever since they've in, implemented this constitution. They've never had a um, a prime minister last his entire term. Um, hey, welcome back, Woke Patriot. Israel may have a hard time when China, Russia, and Gulf countries line up. I mean, we'll see. If if Israel has our back, if, if we really are serious about going after Iran, which the military-industrial complex is, we might see... We might see the United States, you know, conveniently forget about the crimes against the Palestinians... If, uh, if Israel is willing to uh, bleed for us when it comes to fighting uh, Iran. We'll see. Anyway, uh, Pakistan news here. Amir Khan interview former Pakistan PM on elections and how to deal with the Taliban. Um, I figure, you know what, let's hear it from the horse's mouth. Let's get an interview with Amir Khan and, and see what's going on. Uh, Pakistan's former prime minister, Imran Khan, says that he's... Imran Khan. Sorry, I keep saying that wrong. ...lucky to be alive, accusing the authorities of trying to kill him. Mr. Khan's supporters have clashed with security forces outside his home in recent days while he's fighting a succession of legal cases against him, including charges of terrorism. Imran Khan is Pakistan's most popular and polarizing politician, a former cricket captain who led his nation to World Cup glory in 1992. Mr. Khan became prime minister in 2018, only to be the country's first leader to be ousted in a parliamentary no-confidence vote in April 2022. He blamed his removal on a US-concocted foreign conspiracy backed by Pakistan's opposition parties. Unfounded allegations that Washington and the current government have repeatedly denied. Mr. Khan has done his utmost ever since to be a thorn in the side of the government and Pakistan's powerful military. And it's been a tumultuous 12 months for the former Prime Minister. In August, police charged Mr Khan under anti-terror laws after the former Prime Minister accused the police and judiciary of detaining and torturing one of his closest aides. In October, Mr Khan was disqualified from holding public office after being found guilty of abusing his position as then Prime Minister to buy and sell gifts received during state visits. Yeah. Mr. Khan. Yeah, and look, and I'm not denying that there was corruption, because I'm sure there was, and that's, that's one of the core issues with Pakistani leadership. But I'm also acknowledging that the moment a new prime minister is voted in and he takes a seat, there's a coalition form to destroy him and depose him. So like the, the day one, they'll open a bunch of erroneous investigations. They'll throw a bunch of shit because they immediately form a coalition to destroy the new person in charge. And that's, it's kind of how it's been since the very beginning of this uh, democratic experiment in Pakistan. It's really quite a shame. Denies all charges. The and in November, are left out of this he was completely. shot in the shin while leading an anti-government protest, a clear assassination attempt, his supporters claim. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif condemned the attack but categorically rejected his predecessor's accusations. Last week, Mr Khan's supporters dramatically clashed with police after authorities tried to arrest the former Prime Minister at his home in Lahore to bring him before a court on corruption charges. A judge then cancelled the arrest warrant after Mr. Khan officially marked his appearance at the court in Islamabad on Saturday, while street battles between police and Khan supporters raged. His next court appearance is due on March the 30th. Well, today the Pakistani government postponed regional elections in the important state of Punjab. Earlier I spoke to Imran Khan and asked him if he was now worried that this year's national elections might also be put off. They're going to try. You know, the worry right now is that we are heading towards martial law. I mean, They're going to try. basically, this is now a total... If they feel any hint that they could lose to this guy, they'll delay, destroy the elections if possible. Complete violation of our constitution. The five judges of the Supreme Court categorically stated that according to the constitution, the elections in Punjab had to be held on the 30th of April. 
and beyond 30th of April meant that they were going beyond the constitution, the law of the land. Mm. So what has happened is worrisome to all of us that we are heading towards some sort of a military rule. If you carry on with your protests on the streets, will you not just perpetuate the cycle of violence that is undermining Pakistan and frankly worrying to the rest of the world? Matt, now look, let me put the facts on the, on the table for you so that you know what is happening in Pakistan. When we were removed, not once did I do any demonstration that was beyond what the Constitution allows me. Like, for instance, in France, they have protest on pensions. So my constant Constitution allows me to hold rallies and put a point of view forward to the people. Now, since the last two months, we, have, we were in power in two of the four provinces. We dissolved our governments. The, the, the Constitution says elections should have been held in 90 days, and the Supreme Court then passed a ruling that on 30th of April, they should be held, uh, elections should be held. We didn't do anything outside the law. We dissolved our governments to hold the elections on the 30th of April. But the, what the government is doing, and this is the worry, now this is where the destabilization will take place, because they are now going against the Constitution. And they now are, 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 are pushing the elections forward, God knows when, simply because they know that they will lose in the elections. OK. So Pakistan is a nuclear armed power on the verge of bankruptcy, sitting on a geopolitical fault line, a very dangerous one. What are you doing, what are you personally doing um, to make the world lose less sleep right now? Well, look, you know, let's not worry about Pakistan's nuclear program because the entire political spectrum, everyone believes that if one thing we need to keep secure is our nuclear program, because that's our guarantee for freedom. Because we have a neighbor seven Facts. times the size of Pakistan. Facts. And clearly, the three wars fought, and we just feel that, you know, we need that security uh, of this nuclear uh, cover. It's like, yeah, that's the one thing that everyone in, pa in Pakistan government agrees on, is that, you know, we're, we, we're, we're going to hold on to the nuke, and we're not going to use the nuke, because that, that lets us... That lets us play with the big boys. Everyone has to pretend like they they, they have to respect us, right? Um, man, straight. That's, that's that's some earnest honesty right there. Pakistan has an enormous amount of influence on events in neighboring Afghanistan. Would you say to the Taliban running Afghanistan today to let the girls go to school? Look, Matt. Look, Afghanistan has a, and Pakistan have a, a boundary border of two and a half thousand kilometers. No, no, I'm it talking is, about schools but, here, specific. But, I don't want to, let, I don't want to deal I, with I, the I, I, No, ask, yeah, I answer the question. What about schools? Will you tell them to let the girls the go to school? Because I know the Afghan character much more than anyone uh, there, in the, especially in the Western countries, they do not like to be told what to do. Let me just say, if the Western countries want to influence Afghanistan, this current government, they must mainstream them. I kept telling them that, look, engage them. Get them involved in the mainstream. If you isolate them, what influence are you going to have on them? This motherfucker talking about mainstreaming the Taliban. So if you mainstream, then let them have a stake. So then talk about human rights. Right now... I see what he's saying, though. I'm, I see what he's saying. You know, like, you don't have to give them anything. Let them come to the table, which, which is a legitimizing effort right but let them come to the table and say look if you want any of anything for you know step number one um you know do something about uh women's rights right i mean the taliban don't want to hear that though i mean does does anyone truly believe that the taliban wants to do any of that shit they i will say though that they pretended for a little while which was interesting to see like these extremist theocrats who've only read one book in their life literally um, yeah, that's a good point, woke patriot. But I mean, I think it's fair to say there's some very there are some differences between the Saudi government and the Taliban. Um, but I I I think that is like how much harm. Big von Hindenburg vibes. I mean, we should we should. I mean, the fact is they are the government of Afghanistan, like it or not. Um, they are the official government of Afghanistan. Um, and obviously 
pointing a gun or threatening them doesn't work. So maybe we should try maybe we should try diplomacy even if it is with the Taliban. Difference not much with regard to human rights. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Taliban are more hardcore than than the Saudi Arabians, but it's not like Saudi Arabia doesn't want they're not that interested in women that are educated and that can drive and stuff. But I think they've they've had there there are women in Saudi Arabian government, I think, and didn't they just get the right to drive begrudgingly? I think they got the right to drive. There are some differences even in human rights with Saudi Arabia and the Taliban. With that said, I do think ultimately I do think if if we're not gonna if we're not gonna be successful at threatening them with violence, then maybe we should try diplomacy. Now you push them in an isolation. The money is frozen, and why would they listen to anyone? So my advice is that you know get them involved, give them a stake in the international uh, community, so that when you tell them They're to the have Taliban, girls educated. Though. You know, you will, they will listen to you. Right now, they are not. I mean, I and get what he's saying, right? Dangle a carrot and see, and see if, they'll, if they'll react. But, I mean, they're pretty fucking clear on what they believe in, man. They're pretty fucking clear on, on how, where they stand on the rights of women um, and the rights of all people there, but especially women. It's, they're kind of unwavering on that, you know? They're, they're, they react when you try and uh, tell them anything because hmm. it... He's, he's he's pretending that the Taliban are like rational actors, you know, like because all of their uh, what they believe in is totally irrational. Interfere in our internal affairs. Okay, we're gonna leave it there. You know, the, I mean, how irrational is it to tell a woman a woman that you can't show me your hair or else I will get so fucking horny I will rape you? How is that rational? So I think uh, Imran Khan here is being a little dishonest with his, um, and and yeah, man, you're not going to get very far. You're not you're not going to get that that Western friendship, that Western support over here defending the Taliban. I see what he's saying though. It's not like he defended the Taliban, but he's just trying to say you're not. It's not dropping bombs on them is not going to work. Um, maybe you should let them come to the table and dangle some carrots in front of them and see what happens. Because right now, your program of isolation is obviously not working either. Um, so that is a good point. That's, an, that's kind of, un, you can't really ignore that point. So that is something. But anyway, there you go, YouTube. That's my Pakistan update. And uh, we'll, we'll get some more updates as they come down.